Actions are judged by their intention And every man shall be judged accordingly And whatever you keep inside of your heart In alhamdulillahi wa nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiru Wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyita a'malina ومن يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ثم أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters, wherever you are around the globe at this present time, I greet you with the greetings of the believers. Assalam. Peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you and the mercy and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I first and foremost ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless this gathering and to accept it as an hour that is solely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow it to be an hour in which we can grow together. An hour in which we can recharge our hearts from the trials and tribulations that have afflicted us from throughout the week. My dear brothers and sisters, of the blessings and the favors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon this ummah, the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that of ithar, selflessness, giving preference to others who are in need over one's own self. It is known in history that the Arab, before receiving the message, before receiving the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Arab were a selfish people that thought only of themselves and their own tribes. One of their sayings that they had was, Unsara khaqa dhaliman aw madluman. Give victory to your brother if he's oppressed or if he's oppressing. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it was clear that within a short period, the Arab were killing each other. It was normal for the Arab to take a weapon and, and to take a group of people from their tribe and to attack another tribe, to attack them and to kill their men and to take their women, to steal their wealth, and to even have their children as slaves. This was something that was normal in the Arab world, in the, in the Arabian Peninsula, before Islam. And this of course would cause a reaction, a retaliation from that tribe, where that tribe would come and do the same to this tribe, until we saw a cycle of violence. A cycle of violence running through the Arabian Peninsula, based on that of selfishness. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the mercy to mankind, our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to teach the Arab, and not only the Arab, but the whole world, how to live in peace in this life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to teach us tawheed, and to teach us the way that life could be lived in peace and harmony amongst each other. What were once enemies, enemies killing each other within a short period, became a brotherhood, became brothers. And wherever the flag of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, la ilaha illallah was placed, that that brought peace and harmony to that land. 
And of the reasons of that was ithar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has reminded us in the Qur'an about how we were, not only the Arab, but how all of us were before, before we accepted, before the revelation came to us, the teachings of Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the Qur'an, وَاذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانَهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has reminded us, He has said, Remember the favor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put upon you when you were enemies and then He brought your hearts together. He brought your hearts together and you became from His favor brothers. But not just brothers, brothers living in a society. Those who were once enemies, those who were once tribal people that were killing each other became a brotherhood living together, spreading love and peace amongst each other. And of the greatest reasons for that love, reasons for that peace that they now found that they didn't have before, was that of ithar, of selflessness. Giving priority or preference to those who are less in need to their own selves. And of the examples of that is without doubt the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the greatest example for mankind. Those Arab did not learn this by themselves, but they learned by following the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the example that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam set in his life, how he dealt with them, the manner that he showed them in example. And of that was one night, on a cold winter's night, the Prophet ﷺ was standing there, and he had no, no, no coat, no cloak. And he was clearly feeling the cold. Until one, one of the Sahaba, one of the women of the Ansar came to the Prophet ﷺ, and gave the Prophet ﷺ a gift. It was a cloak of velvet that she had weaved with her hands. And upon seeing this gift, the Prophet ﷺ became very pleased. He clearly liked this present that was given to him and he put it straight on and began to wear it straight away. The very first time that he had worn this present and it was something that he loved, something that uh, was very, he was very pleased about someone giving him this gift. But then... After a short period, one of the Sahaba saw the Prophet wasallam wearing this, this cloak. And the Sahaba looked at it and said, What a beautiful cloak, Ya Rasulullah. What a beautiful cloak that is. MashaAllah. May I put it on? The Prophet wasallam. it was the first time that he had worn it. Something that he loved, he took it off and he gave it to the companion. And the companion began to wear it. And the Prophet ﷺ returned to his cold state that he was before. Upon this, some of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ uh, roused or scolded this Sahaba for doing that. And they told him to give the cloak back to the Prophet ﷺ. But as he went to give it back to the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet ﷺ refused and told him that it was his. This was the example. And the Prophet ﷺ, even though he needed it, even though he was feeling the cold, he gave it to his brother. He gave it to his companion. And this is the teachings that the Prophet ﷺ taught us. This is the way that the Prophet ﷺ wants us to be. And it is related upon the Sahaba that when the Muhajirun, the, those who migrated from Mecca to Medina, those who were the migrators, migrated from Mecca 
without anything. Most of them had nothing. 13 years of torture, of oppression. They had had their belongings taken away from them, stolen. They had been boycotted. They had lost their house. They had been driven out of their homes. And they made their way from the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Medina, a new land where most of them had never even seen before. Medina, the land of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa the land that opened their arms to the believers. And when the, when the believers arrived, the first thing that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa did after building the masjid was to organize the tying in the brotherhood. The brotherhood of the believers, of the muhajirun and the ansar, the helpers. And the Prophet ﷺ made each of them a brother of one another. So he would join different, different men to different men. A man from the ansar to a man from the muhajirun. And of them was a sahaba by the name of uh, Sa'd bin Rabi'ah. And Sa'd bin, bin Rabi'ah was from the Ansar and he was a man who had much wealth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had opened up the doors of wealth for him. And he was well established in Medina. And he was given a partner, a companion by the name of Abdurrahman bin Auf. Radiallahu anhu. And Sa'ad bin Rabi' radiallahu anhu said to Abdurrahman bin Auf, he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed me with much wealth. So I am offering you half of my wealth and choose whichever of my wives that you wish. Subhanallah. Take half of my wealth and whichever wife that you want, choose and take her. This is the first time that Saad had ever met Abdurrahman bin Auf. They had no ties. There was no ties of, of, of tribal or even that they were from the same area. But they were in fact people who had just met, but from the ithar, from the, what they learned from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he gave, that he was willing to give half of his wealth and his wife to this sahaba. But the sahaba did not want to bring a, be a burden upon his companion. So he said, Barakallahu laka fi malika wa ahlik. May Allah bless you in your wealth and in your family. Dallani ala suq. Show me where the marketplace is. And he automatically left and went to the marketplace and began to search on his own rizq. And it is related that it is related that when he wished to marry, a few months later, he gave a golden ring as a dowry payment because he had he had acquired so much wealth from working in the, in the marketplace. It is related in another story of the Sahaba. In another story of the Sahaba about Abu Talha al-Ansari. One man came to the Prophet ﷺ and complained of not having any food. He only had water. So the Prophet ﷺ automatically began to look at his wives and go to the house of his wives and to ask them, what can we give this man? But they had nothing. This is the house of the leader of the Muslims. They had, didn't have anything, no food. So the Prophet ﷺ said, who will take this man as a guest tonight? And Abu Talha al-Ansari raised his hand and said, I will, Ya Rasul. So Abu Talha went back to his wife and told his wife that we now have a guest. It is the guest of the Prophet ﷺ in our house tonight, what can we cook him? But his wife was astonished. She said, we don't have anything except for the food of the children. All we have is some wheat and stuff for the children. So Abu Talha, he thought, what we can do then is we can put the kids, you put the children to sleep early. And then uh, when it is time to serve, you cook the food. And when it's served, I will switch out the light. And then he, our guests can eat. And he will not know that I'm not eating. And he did this. The food was served and he switched out the light. And the guest in his house began eating. And he was pretending that he was eating. Making noises with his mouth. So that the companion would not feel 
uh, feel that he has wronged him in any way. And when this news reached the Prophet wasallam the next morning, the Prophet wasallam said that Allah has astonished and is pleased with that in which you did last night. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the verse. وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِكُمْ وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِكُمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصَةً وَمَنْ يُقَشُوحَ نَفْسِهِ فَأُولَٰئِكُ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the verse that they, they gave preference over themselves even when they were in need. And whoever has saved himself from the, from the evilness of stinginess, that he is the one who, is, who reaches success. Stinginess, my brothers and sisters, is something that is difficult for us humans to get over. Being selfish. Because the nafs, the nafs inside the human being has that tendency to want to hoard and gather things. But the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us how to how to defeat this illness because it is an illness of the heart, stinginess. And the Sahaba who were most of them before Islam were stingy, were selfish, and yet within a short period they had learned from the teachings of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam how to how to cleanse themselves from this disease. And one of the best examples is related in a story from Hudayfa bin uh, Hudayfa al Adawi. Hudayfa al Adawi went to the battlefield of Yarmouk. And Yarmouk was a great battle. Rome had hundreds of thousands of soldiers, and the believers had tens of thousands. They were clearly outnumbered, but yet the victory came to the believers. And after the battlefield, after the battle, Hudayfa bin uh, Hudayfa al Adawi began looking for his uncle amongst the bodies, amongst those who were who were injured, and he had some water with him. And finally, he reached and he found his uncle, and his uncle was alive. He was he was on the verge of death, but he was still alive. And he said to him, "Uncle, salam alaikum, uncle. Can I can I give you some water?" And his uncle made a made a, 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 a sign with his finger that yes, he wanted water. So he was just about to pour him the water and then he, they heard a noise. It was someone close to them and he made a noise like, ah, oh, ah, oh, like he was in pain. So the uncle pointed to him as if to mean give the water to him. So, the, so Hudayfa ran quickly over to the other companion and he was about to give him some water. And he was ready. And then they heard another noise. Ah, oh, ah, oh, it was another person who had been injured, who was still alive. So this, this Sahabi who was Hisham, he pointed to the other one and said, give, them, give the water to him, he needs it more than me. So then Udayfa ran over to where he was and got the water and began and was just about to give the water to him and he realized that he was dead. The third one had died. So he quickly ran back to Hisham and to give him the water and Hisham was dead. And then he quickly ran back to his uncle to give him the water and his uncle was dead as well. This was the ithar of the companions that they would give a, a water, give water to another companion who needed it over their own selves. This was the selflessness that the Prophet ﷺ taught us. This was the selflessness that the Prophet ﷺ showed us that the companions applied into their lives. And this is the selflessness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that those who get rid of the stinginess, that they are the ones who are successful. And inshallah ta'ala will take a short break and return just after this message. <laughs> This is our duty, this is something that we need to do. 
with whatever language that we know we need to understand the Quran we need to get to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us so that we will be steadfast on the deen of Islam that's why the forgiveness is mentioned in so many verses in the Quran in so many different ways and means by the mercy of Allah that the person would gain such a great level and that is to be forgiven and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him speak clearly miraculously in front of everyone to defend the honor and the dignity of Maryam the mother of Jesus the best of all women and the truth is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship and he's the creator of the heavens and earth Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back my brothers and sisters to Living Hearts and today we're discussing a topic that is very important and that is uh, ithar or selflessness and we've seen that a society can change a society to be able to be a society that's living in peace and harmony it must have this level of ithar it must have some level. If everyone was selfish, thinking only of his own self and his own, what they call muslaha, or their own benefit, that you would see in the society corruption. You would see trouble and evil inside the society because everyone would be trying to, to defeat the other. There must be some level of ithar, some level of of selflessness, of giving preference to others. If we did not have ithar, then who would look after those who are disabled? If we did not have ithar, who would look, over the, who would look after those who are old? If we did not have ithar, who would look after the orphan? Who would look after anything? If we were all just focused on ourselves. And ithar is something that we have to work on ourselves. We have to try and push ourselves to have this level of ithar and to try as much as we can to have ithar in our life. Islam is not telling us to forget about yourself. And this is something that is interesting that if you look at philosophy, for example, philosoph the philosophers, they, used to, or they say and they teach that you must be selfish. And this is the recipe for what? This is the recipe for corruption because they don't have any guidance, the philosophers. But the Prophet ﷺ had the message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the order from Allah, how to live on this earth in the correct manner. And of that is that you have a level of ithar, a level of selflessness that you give to others over your own self sometimes. It is not fitting in a society that we're all selfish. Otherwise, we will just find societies deteriorating in which they are today. One of the stories that I heard when I was researching this topic was a very beautiful story about a young boy. A young boy who was five years of age. And this young boy had a sister who was suffering from a terminal illness. She was going to die. There was only one thing that could save her, of course, by the will of Allah. And that was a blood transfusion. A blood transfusion from the little boy who had already had that disease and he had the antibodies inside him to be able to defeat that disease. So the doctor spoke to the young boy and explained to him and his mother explained to him that we needed to make a blood transfusion to save your sister's life. The little boy wanted to think about it until he took the courage and he said, okay, okay, I will do it. The next day they got it all ready and he was laying there ready to, to have this blood transfusion to save his sister. And he was laying there and they had all ready to go and it started and he closed his eyes 
And then, after a while, he opened one eye and began to look out. Until he said to the doctor, How long will it take me to die? How long will it take me to die? He thought that the doctor meant that he would die and his sister would live in the place. But this was not the case. But this is what his understanding was. His understanding was that he would be dying and his sister would live. But he put himself in that place and did it out of his ithar. And this is because he was still on the, on the fitra, the fitra of, of Islam. He was still on the original disposition that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created man. That he has created man with that tendency to do good. That tendency to be able to do good. To be able to do good deeds before he gets corrupted in this life by the Satan and the, by the shaitan and the shaitan al-ins. The human shaitan that we, that we meet in this life. But before we are corrupted, that this is how we are. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created, like, created us like this. And not only humans, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even created animals with a level of ithar. And we have a video about a, a pack of wolves or a pack of husky dogs showing ithar. If we can take it up and take a look at that right now. Take a look at this video of the dogs right now. You can see in this video that the dog has called the other dogs and now there is a dead orca or a dead killer whale and he's called his, his friends to come and eat. He's collected some himself. Look at this. Come and, there's a big orca here ready for us all to eat. So his friends arrived and now a seal or some crazy seal has come out of the water and grabbed the leg of the dog and began trying to pull it back in the water. Now the other dogs are, are helping him out and chased him back into his hole. But he did not leave without, without causing some affliction upon one of, their, one of their companions. Here he is coming over. He's licking the wound of the dog, of his companion. It's a bad wound, maybe broken. Now he's hobbling along. It is very hard for him to walk now. He's losing energy. Maybe infections are starting to seep in. They're taking a rest. So his companions lay with him and rest. A blizzard comes. Instead of running away into a hole, they stay with their companion. Staying around him. Making sure that he is okay. They don't want to leave him. Now the blizzard's finished. They've gone looking for some food. He's, re he's in a bad shape now. He's really in a bad shape. So they've brought back some food to help their companion because he can't move now. Infection has set in. He's on his way out. Maybe he's going to die. They've placed some food down. Please, please take some of our food. We've brought you some food. He's licking it. He's up, but he's in a bad way. He's in a very bad way. Is he going to eat it? No, he's too sick to eat. He's too sick to eat the gift that they've brought him. And his companions are worried about him. His companions are worried about what, what is going to happen. He doesn't eat, he's going to die. The other dogs have come and brought their, now they've brought their food. They've brought their food so they can offer it as well. But he's not eating anything. He knows he's on his way out. He's probably going to die. He doesn't eat. Infection is set into his blood. Let's give it one last try. 
taking it to them. Come on, take it, eat it, eat something. No, he's not going to eat. So the others have gone off to eat their food and they've left him there to die. But this one, he doesn't want to leave him. He wants to stay there with him. Stay there with him, looking after him. Even animals have ithar. Even animals have selflessness. That they give preference to their companion over their own selves. Then if an animal can do it, then what is asked of us humans? Us humans are going to be accountable on the day of judgment for what we did in this earth, for those poor people that we took advantage of in this earth, for those less fortunate people that we used and took advantage of in this world. What is this world without Ithar? It is a world of violence, a world of stinginess. What is this world without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If you take a look at the, the lands that do not have Allah, they don't even believe in a God. The communist lands. If you take a look, you will see things that are happening that are amazing because of the, the lack of iman, the lack of heart, the lack of mercy that they have in their hearts. We have another video which is showing from China. A video that is coming from China, a land of communism. Take a look at that. Person's coming in the car, he's run over a small child. But wait a minute. Allah! Allah! Someone walks by. People riding by, people walking by, no one's doing anything. Another car. Allah! Allah! Another car runs over his legs. He's still on the ground. Trucks going by. People going by. How many people are going by? Nobody's stopping. Why nobody's stopping for this person? Allah. Subhanallah. Finally. Finally after a man. And he's just pulled him to the side. Getting him off the road. Why? Because this is, this is the stinginess. This is the stinginess, the, the thinking of my own self. It's all about my own self. Forget about everyone else. I'm going to make sure it's all about my own self, that I get my piece of the pie. What about when we die? You don't think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to ask us about this and... At the moment, we will, take, we will start to take the phone calls, inshallah. We'll open up the telephone lines. Uh, we have the telephone number up on the screen there. It is 2 248 And please, brothers and sisters, if you have some comment that you would like to to add to today's program, or you have a question, or you have a lesson for us, something that you could teach us, something that you could show us in an example that you know of Ithar, then give us a call on this number. We're ready for your call. This is your time. This is your time to call in and have your say on Living Hearts. And before we go any further, we'll take a look at the Facebook. And subhanAllah, if your heart wasn't touched by this, that video then subhanAllah, you need to, to really uh, take a look at yourself because, wallahi, this, look, at the, look at the societies that are without Allah, the societies that are without... People want to choose communism or want to choose something else other than the laws of Allah. As we see clearly that the Arab were killing each other before. And then within 20 years, they were a brotherhood bringing peace amongst each other. This is the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the teachings of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, spreading love amongst the ummah. And if we take a look at the Facebook, uh, 
before we do that, we have a telephone call. Brother Abdul Basir from the UK. Brother, Assalamu Alaikum. Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Wa Alaikum Assalam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. How are you, brother? Alhamdulillah, bi khair. Alhamdulillah, brother. How okay. are you? Uh, mashallah, mashallah, we like your program. Uh, Living the Heart is one of the uh, one of the, my favorite program in the Huda TV. Mashallah, it's very nice. Uh, and I, 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 I like so much your topics that you've chosen uh, in, the, in the past, especially the topic of uh, uh, Ash-Shaheed and uh, uh, Do Not Lie and some others as well, uh, some of the best topics you have chosen. And mashallah, I really enjoy it, very nice. And today also your topic is a very beautiful topic. Uh, just only uh, I mentioned that uh, uh, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, uh, you will be uh, not a, a believer that, uh, that something uh, you, have, uh, you have, that you have to give to charity, something you have be- uh, uh, best in your life, that you have to give some others. Then you have to become a, uh, 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 a pure believer, inshallah. What I remember, uh, I'm, not, I'm not good in translation, but this is what I remember that I have to say to you. Jazakallah khair, brother Abdul, Abdul Basir. Uh, give something back. Give something back. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you wealth. He gave you health. Then why you don't give something back? Why don't you give something back to the community that you live in? Give something back to those people who are around you. Volunteer. Do something voluntary. For, not for fame. Not because you want to be known as a person who is uh, helping, but no. Because you want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you know that this gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, this wealth or this health, whatever it is, that it is a gift from Allah and you want to give something back to those others, to, to, to those who are less fortunate to you. Helping each other, helping each other, ithar, giving preference to others above yourselves. And we'll go to the Facebook and don't forget brothers and sisters, uh, give us a call. We're ready for your calls. We're happy to, to accept your calls. We had a brother from UK now. Jazakallah khair, brother. Uh, we'll go to the Facebook here. Uh, we have uh, the question that we had this week was, uh, this week's question is, what does it mean to be generous in Islam? And we said generous, uh, but what we mean is selflessness. What does it mean to be generous or selflessness in Islam? And we have many great answers. We have uh, Afnan, and Afnan has written, uh, it means that you give charity to other Muslims and help them. Jazakallah khair, beautiful answer. Uh, someone has written here, Tajani, uh, no salvation between the Muslim. Not quite sure what that one means, but Jazakallah khair for your, for your answer there. Uh, we have Fatima, uh, Fatima. Uh, she's a regular here, and she's said that to be generous means to not be a miser. Don't be stingy. And to give the needy and to help the poor. Generosity also has to do with paying zakat. And she's right on the ball here. She's understood it perfectly. That to help the needy and the poor. Without this ithar, who will help them? And this is how the, the basis of the Muslim ummah, of the Muslim nation, is based upon this love and mercy and this ithar. And that is what brings peace amongst our nation. Share the blessings. We have uh, Hamudi. Hamudi Hamdan. Share the blessing of Allah to others and be kind. Don't make someone's life difficult. Uh, we also have uh, uh, Tawlan, Tawlanita bint Abdullahi and she said, Wa alaikum salam. Uh, it's willingness and liberality. The one who is giving is in need but places his own needs aside and gives priority to others over himself giving out money, time, advice, even kindness, and being free from pettiness in character or mind. And this is a very good, uh, very important point that the sister has made. Maybe you don't have any money to give. And that's, that's no problem because you don't need to only give money in ithar. You could give your time. You could give your advice. You could give your even a smile. Even a smile to, that you, you do that to make someone else happy. To make someone else's life uh, pleased, someone else's life happy, and you are amongst them. We have uh, Talhat uh, Shuaib, and Talhat has said that uh, he loves 
those who are generous in giving out uh, for His sake. Uh, Allah loves those who are generous and giving out for His sake and detest, and Allah detests miserly and extravagancy. But love the one who is in the middle, nor is a miser, and spend extravagantly. And we have hood hood. Uh, generous in Islam means to love for each other what you love for yourselves. Give more than you take with a smile on your face and uh, with no reminders. Amin. And that is another important point that when you give, don't regret it. Some people they give and then they think in themselves, I uh, wish I hadn't have given that. But no, this is, you're not going to get the reward from that. When you give something, Give it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and smile and say, Khalas, yani, I did this to clean my nafs and to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, Zeeb and Polly, being generous in Islam means loving, kindness, helping the needy uh, for the sake of Allah, not financially, but being there for them and giving them words of wisdom. And uh, Sister Hovi de Limbazon has generous in Islam. It's difficult to explain in my own explanation because it's inside your heart not being said, just Allah knows everything. So it's something that's in your heart between you and Allah that you did it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And really, this topic of ithar is something, or selflessness, is something that is needed in, in this ummah. Wallahi. It is something that is needed in our Muslim nations. We are heading towards, uh, there is a lot of wealth inside the nations and everybody is trying to grab it. And most people will do whatever they can to get it. Some will sell their religion. Others will sell their mother. Uh, we have another telephone call. We have sister uh, from KSA. I didn't catch the name there. Umar Zuhar. Umar Zuhar from KSA. Suha. Assalamu alaikum sister. Assalamu alaikum sister. Hello sister, are you there? Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum sisters, uh, sister Umm Zuhar from, from KSA, are you there? Okay, we seem to have lost her. Uh, feel free to call back in sister. Uh, we're waiting for your call there and we're waiting for anyone else's call who would like to uh, contribute to today's program and really it is something that we all need to contribute to contribute with our time contribute with our wealth contribute with our advice whatever we have give something back to the community that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you if you have wealth then give something back to the community build a masjid or Build a school or something like that. Something that is going to help the ummah. If you have health, then teach others. Train others. Take others. Take them on camps. Take them to places where they can enjoy. Uh, we, ha we have the sister again back from uh, Umm Zohar from uh, K KSA. Allahu Akbar. Yani may Allah reward you, sister. Wallahi. May Allah reward you. You've tried twice, inshallah, maybe the third time. But may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you there, sister. Uh, and even if you don't get to say what you wanted to say, I'm sure Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to reward you for your intention. For your intention of trying to do something good. And we're mentioning that if you've been given health and you've been given a skill, then use that. Okay, we have someone else on the line here. Assalamu alaikum, uh, as -salamu alaikum sister. Assalamu alaikum salam, Sheikh. How are you, sister? Hello, sister. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, yeah, uh, mashallah, you're uh, giving a very nice uh, speech today, Sheikh. I really like your program. Jazakallah khair, sister. I just uh, wanted to ask you one uh, question, Sheikh. Like, uh, how can we uh, generate generosity in the children who are of, like, you know, six, seven years of age? How can we teach them to be generous to others? Uh, if you could please advise on this. MashaAllah. Jazakallah khair, sister. That is a very, a very important question. And 
the answer to that in simple is example. Children usually follow the example of their parents. And if they see their parents giving or being generous, then they will follow. And I can, I can vouch for that uh, in my own children. I have seen it in my own children. And I remember, subhanAllah, uh, when we were collecting money for Syria, uh, for the people in Syria that were suffering. And uh, my own son, uh, Isa, may Allah bless him and have mercy on him. Uh, he threw his, he had a wallet uh, that had some money in it. And he threw the whole wallet, yeah, and not only the money, but the whole wallet. He threw everything inside the, uh, inside the thing. So it comes from example. If we set the example and uh, encourage our children to come with us and to watch us and to help, and, and to, to help out, uh, maybe setting up an, organi- an event. Uh, in a, if you're in a land where, where you're setting up an event uh, for believers, involve your kids. Don't leave them to the side. Don't leave them over to the side. Involve them into the things that you are doing and involve them. And always remind them that this wealth that they've been given or this life that they have is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as long as we remember that, that this gift that is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we will return to Allah. So as long as we remember that, then we should be able to uh, clean our hearts and teach our children to clean their hearts from this disease. And we should be very severe upon selfishness. Uh, we should try not to be selfish and to be very severe on ourselves if we are t- have the tendency to be selfish. Fight yourself. This takes a jihad. This takes jihad in oneself to defeat this uh, bukhul, this, this selfishness that uh, the nafs te- has the tendency of having. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us and this, this, this selfishness is a test. It's a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, we have another telephone call. Uh, another brother from... Brother Zadani from KSA. Assalamu alaikum brother. Uh, Walaikum salam, Sheikh. Jazakallah uh, khair. Uh, I like your program. My question is, uh, I'm uh, from the USA, but working in Saudi now. Yes, talk from the phone, brother, not from the computer or the or the TV. But yes, we Go are on. trying to do. Yeah, we're, we're trying to do uh, the same, uh, the program, I mean, uh, the, the message you are giving is to give back to community. We are doing, uh, we are have a small organization that is uh, doing the same thing in our local community. Uh, my question is, uh, how can we get uh, uh, your videos, you know, especially the one you show earlier in your program, how we can link to uh, either buy it or link it with your program uh, to, to on Facebook or web, our website, is, is how we do it. Okay, very easy question there, brother. Uh, what you need to do is... Uh, go to the Huda website and at the Huda website now which is uh, www.huda.tv uh, go to the Huda website and go into the area that says uh, YouTube is, you take a look on the top as uh, multimedia and you go into multimedia and then it says YouTube and all of the living hearts and all of the programs all of the programs uh, on Huda TV are in fact uh, they're all recorded now and placed up on YouTube. So you can catch every single one of them. And we will be putting uh, some of them on the Facebook. And before I forget, brothers and sisters, if you haven't joined up to the Facebook yet, join up with us. Uh, we're giving out reminders during the week. And uh, we have questions. And, you know, it is something that uh, join up with the Facebook. And we will be putting on the Living Hearts programs, inshallah. We'll be putting them onto the Facebook uh, as soon as we can, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. Now, we have uh, 
a very important message today and an important task. And that task is this week, brothers and sisters, put something back into, into the community. Put something back into, into your lives, in, into the lives of other people. Uh, give preference to someone over yourself this week. Give it a go. Try it and you'll see that your life will change. You will see that you will become more happier in yourself and you will see also that you will become more successful because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you success, successful. And that is all we have time for today, my brothers and sisters. It has been a pleasure talking to you as usual and it is a beautiful topic today, ithar, uh, selflessness. And inshallah ta'ala, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who are selflessness, those who are able to defeat this, uh, this illness of stinginess in our hearts, Ya Allah. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I ask you to help our brothers and sisters wherever they are around the world who are suffering, those who are disabled, those who, those who are suffering from illness, those who are in, our, in the hospitals, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help them. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I ask you to heal all, all of our brothers and sisters. Our brothers and sisters in the hospitals, those in Syria, those in Burma, wherever they are around the world, even those who are in their own beds today ill, Ya Allah, cure them and help us to cure the illness of stinginess. And that is all we have time for today, my brothers and sisters. Jazakum Allahu khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi barakatuh. When you're living in a lawful way, be mindful of what you say. Be sincere when you pray. Today could be your last day. Bear each other no malice. Greed and faith can coexist in the same heart. heart. Only you can change your heart. We call upon you to do so. 